Hey guys, I just finished building this button. It's basically a better version of my last one. Uh, again, it's an emergency button. In case of emergency, of course, you want to press it and start rig-rolling your Wi-Fi. And this version has a key for extra security. Um, it comes with... Uh, I, I, I put in an LED and an off switch as well. So this is for the attack. The on-off switch is to turn the whole device on and off. Um, as you can already see, uh, it works without a USB connection. So I managed to put in a battery. Um, I only have this one USB connector for charging and uploading. Um, and yeah, the antenna connector. Pretty cool. This is actually what I wanted to do um, on, on the last button. However, um, this one was too small and not everything uh, fit in there, but uh, this one is a bit bigger and has more space in it, so everything worked just fine. And yeah, it's pretty cool. This this will be fun. I will put all the links to the parts in the video description, the, um, as well as the code. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Hey, I got a new emergency button. This is the old version. This is the new version I've just got. So it's it's a bit bigger, um, but the main difference here is that first of all, it comes with a key, so you can you can push it inwards always, but you can only um, get it out again if you have the keys. Without the keys, you can press it in, but no no release. Ah. Yeah, and yeah, I opened it already, and it's pretty cool because. It has definitely more space, so I can put the battery in, which I wasn't able with the first version. And um, it also only has one of these blocks under it, so um, yeah, more space. And um, yeah, let's let's get going, I guess. Okay, so the first thing I want to know is um, how these uh, connections uh, work. Because they could either work that it's always connected until you press the button, or they are always disconnected until you press the button. Um, yeah, so I'm using a multimeter here now with... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just checking the continuity, so it beeps when I, when I have connection. And yeah, just putting them in. It beeps. Now I need the keys to... Oh no, I can always push it down, yeah. So it beeps by default if I press it, the button down. No connection. So yeah, these two uh, connections are connected by default until you press the button, then it's disconnected. It could also work the other way around. The other button has two two of these blocks, um, so you could choose what uh, version you want, basically. Okay, last time my original plan was to use these VMOS boards and um, a LiPo charger shield. And yeah, they have these shields, add-on shields, to connect the LiPo battery and you can charge it and everything. And it's pretty simple. Thing is, um, I could do that, um, but it's, I could stack them, which is intended by this design, to stack them over each, uh, over each other. But um, that's not ideal, because I still have this block in the way and I, I should have this whole design as flat and, and thin as possible within the button and I could put them in here like this um, which would definitely work no problem um, but the thing is I'm lazy instead I can just use the NodeMCU07 um, these boards are from Travis Lin you know he makes the offer boards and, and all that stuff. Um, these actually come with the D offer pre-flashed. And yeah, this is the um, the current version, the version 3, or version 2, sorry, version 2. Um, it has the NeoPixel LED. This is the older version uh, without the LED, but still, they are basically the same. It's just the LED that changed and the, the board color. Um, I'm going to use my old version because I don't use it for anything else. And I, I keep this for testing. Um, but you can do the the same the steps I will do with the software and everything. Uh, it will just work with the newer version as well. So the advantage of this is that it has also the antenna connector, 
It has the uh, LiPo charger and, and everything built in already. This is super helpful because I could use the, the VMOS boards, the two chips. But then I also have two USB connectors, one for charging and one for data. And hmm, that's annoying and I have to drill two holes and then I have two connectors and, and all that. Here I only have one and I have everything in one board. I don't have to solder anything. Um, this, that, that, that makes it easier. Okay, so because the button comes on like this and the little block uh, under it is on the right side, it makes more sense to put it like this. So yeah, let's, uh, let's drill a hole. Okay, it, it could have been better, gotta admit that, but... Uh, but it does the job, and it's definitely better than on my first version. Okay, time to clean up. Okay, before I continue, um, the next thing I want to add is this uh, little on-off switch. Um, because, as you know, I want to add the battery, um, but I want to have an additional on-off switch. So I can turn the whole device on-off with this little switch and the the main uh, big red button will just be for starting the attack. Um, so yeah, this is just to really make sure the battery is off and yeah. So this isn't really big or beautiful, but it should be if sufficient enough. Uh, there comes the button, I can turn it on and off. And yeah, should work. Okay, and another thing I need to add and drill a hole for is uh, this little LED. This is a WS2812B uh, or NeoPixel LED. Um, so maybe you saw the, the, the newer version of the NodeMC board has, the, has an LED on board. Um, I'm using the old one that doesn't. Um, but regardless if it has it on board or not, uh, I want to have it so that you can see it from the outside. If it's if the board is inside the button, you you can't see the LED, obviously. So um, I'm gonna drill another hole so I can add the LED to the case. Yeah, I guess this should work. Okay, so I just soldered the LED onto the uh, board. Um, I just, it's, it's pretty simple. So they have six connectors on the back side, these tiny LED breakouts. Um, you have to solder the connections on the D in side, for, stands for data in. There's also data out, so if you want to connect more LEDs, you can, um, yeah, you can put them in serial, basically. That's why you have the out. And um, yeah, they just need, they just require three wires one for power um, and one for ground and one for the data. So I connected it to 3.3 volts, I hope that will work uh, because usually I think they take 5 volts um, to ground and to D7. D7 will be my data my data pin. I soldered on this switch now which I will put in the case and my camera doesn't want to focus but um, yeah, so how I connected it is I have this uh, JST connector and I will put the other end on the battery and the ground just goes straight to the ground from this connector and the uh, the VCC, the, the, the voltage uh, goes to the switch and only if the switch is turned on then the connection goes uh, and, and it goes in this Connector. Yeah, I tested it with the uh, uh, multimeter and yeah, it works. And um, yeah, so now I will solder this connector on the battery. Here is where the, the shrinking tube comes in, so that these um, soldered wires comes a bit of shrinking tube above it. And then, hard to film and do it at the same time. All right, the battery works now. I can see it just by um, turning the button on and seeing that the LED on the board goes on. So 
the next thing to do really is to connect the button and with the button I mean this huge emergency button so it has two connectors and I would just connect it like a regular button by um, putting one side to ground and the other one to a GPIO button, uh, GPIO pin. So I sorted on a wire to ground here already and a wire to D6. Um, yeah. So I just programmed it um, and it seem everything seems to work. So it turns on when I use the switch. Okay, here are my changes to the code real quick. So in the end of the setup function I did this, I basically enabled the button pin uh, as an input, uh, I connected it to D6, if you use a different pin then you have to change it of course, and at the end of the loop function I added this, and that's basically the same as I used last time, only difference is I don't do a D off attack now, I only do the beacon attack, and you can see which uh, SSIDs I added here to the list. Um, and the other thing is to enable the um, NeoPixel LED, you have to go to the A config file in the top and comment this one out, the digital LED, and uncomment the NeoPixel LED. And then you have to change the settings here, settings for NeoPixel LED. Uh, number one, because I only have one LED. Uh, pin 13, because that's the pin I connected it to. And that's it. And I flashed it onto it now and as you can see the LED is green which indicates that the device is not doing anything. Um, the On the board the LED is red because the battery is connected, the switch is on, and we have a USB connection so the red LED just says that the battery is charging. If I disconnect it, I can turn it on, works just the same with battery. Now, it's green because it's idling, press the button turns orange and now let's see if we can see the networks in the list and with the key I can stop the attack then it turns green again and the SSIDs uh, will disappear from the list after a while Okay, so now that the code and everything works, the only thing left to do is uh, putting this in the case. So I'm just hot gluing everything in there now, and yeah, the board is already placed. Alright, the button is also in place now. Okay, the LED is also in place, and it already works, because if I turn it on over the button on the side, uh, the switch on the side, turns on. And if I press the button, turns orange, starts the tech. Perfect. Now, um, I'm nearly done, but I noticed something important I completely forgot. The antenna. Well, it has an onboard antenna, this little ceramic antenna, but that's um, pretty shit, <laughs> to be honest. I want to have the external one, like the last version. Alright, my desk is kind of a mess right now, but I guess that's supposed to happen if you do stuff like this. And yeah, here's the button. I added the... I, I drilled another hole and put the antenna connector on it, just like on the last version. And yeah, I can... don't wanna... have to be careful. So yeah, the antenna... everything is connected. And yeah, I can just um, I can just close this now. All right, and here it is: the emergency rig roll button with on-off switch, LED indicator, integrated battery, so you don't need a USB connection like with the last version. And press it, and you will get rig rolled over the Wi-Fi. Yeah, this looks like it's working. Oh, and of course you can only turn it off with the keys.